Hey everybody, uh, in this video we're going to talk about what Redux is. Now this is something you might have heard about before, uh, or if you haven't heard about Redux, maybe you've heard about NGRX, which is basically a RxJS based version of Redux, uh, and so that can be used with Angular uh, really easily. Uh, this is one of those really popular things that uh, you can get by without using, and it's something that I haven't been uh, using for a really long time, and so it's finally time for me to start learning how to use this properly and I wanted to teach you about it as well. And so the point of this video is basically going to be to do a really kind of naive and basic introduction to the basic content, uh, concepts of Redux and then in future videos or tutorials on uh, my website uh, I'll go into this in, in more depth and we'll cover some examples and how to use it uh, with an actual application. And so generally Redux is often used with React applications, uh, NGRX is used with Angular applications, uh, but we can also use Redux with uh, Stencil applications, which is one of the main reasons I'm looking into it now, uh, since Stencil provides a package for actually using Redux in uh, Stencil.js applications uh, with or without Ionic. So as you can see on screen here, I've got the documentation for React up. Uh, it says it's a predictable state container for JavaScript apps. It's predictable, centralized, debuggable, and flexible. And so we're gonna talk about uh, what that means basically. And so the main sort of point, I guess, for Redux is uh, to control the state in your application. Uh, so I think the concept of state can be a little confusing initially, uh, but it's a reasonably straightforward concept. Uh, if you consider something like, a, uh, let's just say a rock, for example, uh, a rock doesn't really have a state, but then if we consider something like a light bulb, that has an on state and off state. And so the way it's behaving depends on the state that it's in, as in whether the on switch is on or off. Uh, so similarly with our uh, applications, whether they're Ionic applications or whatever we're building, uh, we often have some form of state. So we might have things like uh, if the user has the ability to log in, we might store the logged in user in some uh, state somewhere. Uh, we might have a list of items or maybe we have filters set on those items to maybe uh, display things from a low price to higher price or uh, hide completed to do's that kind of thing and so the behavior of our application changes to, depending on the state and so we need a way to uh, to change that state and to read that state and so if we're using something like angular we might uh, store a lot of this stuff in uh, providers, services, uh, for example, and we might you know, have pages that are able to update those state values. Maybe we can update that from multiple places. Maybe we have different services updating different state values. And so the point is that if you aren't using something like Redux, which you don't have to use, uh, but things could get a little bit messy in terms of state uh, if you don't really know what's updating what if you've got different things modifying state all the time uh, you can get into a situation where things are a bit messy and they could get uh, lead to bugs and issues and so that kind of brings us to the the key point of redux and uh, they kind of have these three principles uh, i think the first two at least from a beginner's perspective uh, kind of get across the point of redux pretty well and so the first principle here is uh, that redux is a single source of truth or provides a single source of truth as the state of your whole application is stored in an object tree within a single store. And so basically what this means is the entire state of your, your whole application, whatever state there is, can be accessed from a single source. So whereas if we were building out some kind of state management you know, solution ourselves, we could kind of store it all over the place. With this, we'll have the single store that we can access uh, the state from. And you can see in the example here, state within the application includes a to-dos array. So there's two to-do items there. And then there's a setting for a visibility filter, which is set to show all. So in this example, there wouldn't be another place with different state settings. There wouldn't be uh, you know, logged in users somewhere where it says the username of the logged in person is uh, Josh, for example. Anything that we want to query about our application state will be contained within this single store. And then on top of that, uh, another principle is that state is read only. So that means that we can read the state, but we can't change it. And as it says here, the only way to change the state is to emit an action, which is an object describing what happened. So in a more uh, basic sense, uh, 
as I was talking about in an Angular application before, we might um, just update the state directly. Something will change and we'll change some value in a service or something like that. And we'll modify that state. Uh, Redux sort of aims to be more predictable and debuggable by instead of directly modifying the state, we instead create these actions that create a new state for us. And we're going to talk a little bit about that in just a second. And so you can see here that it says, because all changes are centralized and happen one by one in a strict order, there are no subtle race conditions to watch out for. Uh, so in general, everything is going to be uh, more organized and structured in terms of modifying and accessing state. And there is one more uh, principle here, and which as I mentioned before, it's not something I think that is super important from a beginner's pers uh, perspective to understand, but it says that changes are made with pure functions uh, so to specify how the state tree is transformed by actions, you write pure reduces. Uh, we're going to talk about reduces in just a second. A uh, pure function basically means that it gives the same, the function will give the same output for the same inputs. Um, uh, but the main thing here is that we understand the concept of uh, what a reducer is. So if we just jump over into another section in the documentation called concepts, this gives a pretty uh, straight up example of how this whole concept works. So we have a object uh, like we kind of looked at before with the to-dos. I think that's almost the same example. That's very similar if it's not, but uh, basically we have this object that describes the entire state of our application. We have our to-dos and a visibility filter here. Uh, so we could read from that if we wanted to, to control different things in our application, but we can't modify this object directly. If we did want to change the state in our application, obviously, you know, we're going to be adding to do's or deleting to do's or changing the filter. We can do that using these actions. And so an action will look like this. We have various types. So we might create an action called add to do that wants to change the text to go to swimming pool. And there's a toggle to do action here, a set visibility filter action. Uh, so we can create actions to do whatever we, or whatever we want to modify the state. And then we have the concept of a reducer. And uh, what a reduce does basically is take in two values. It takes in the current state and an action, and then it will produce a new state from that. So we're not modifying the state. We're just providing an action and then we're generating a new state based on the action and the current state. So let's consider uh, one of these examples down here. So we have this reducer and let's consider the case where we have the uh, toggle to do action. And so if we look at the action here, we've got type toggle to do index one. So we want to change or toggle the to do uh, that's in the uh, position or index of one in our to do's array. So in that case, it's going to be the second one here since, the, since it starts at zero. So we want to basically change this to do's uh, completed value from false to true. So to write a, a reducer to do that, we have the to do uh, toggle to do case here. And what we do is, as you can see, this takes in the state and action. And what we do is we return our new state. And so what we want our new state to be is the current state, uh, but we map the to do here. Uh, we look for the one where the uh, index provided in the action equals uh, the index of the to do. And then we have two cases here. And so if it does equal the index of the to do, then we provide uh, we return a modified to do. And so in this case, we provide the same text just by reusing that to do.txt value. Uh, but instead for the completed value, we just uh, switch that value from true to false or false to true um, by prefixing it with the exclamation mark there, which is going to uh, toggle that Boolean value. And then we have the default case where if this doesn't equal the index, so it's not the to do we're interested in, we just return the to do as it is already. So that's going to go through each of the to do's uh, that are in the state and either modify it if the index matches uh, the one in the action, or it will just return it as it is. And then the new state will contain all of the existing to do's except the one we were interested in that will have its completed value toggled. And obviously we also have other cases here like add to do, and you could have even more cases than that. And so basically we just have this uh, function that modifies our state in the way we want. And this reducer function will create a new state uh, when given an action. So that's the basic concept of Redux. As I mentioned, we are going to go over this in more detail in future tutorials. We'll look at some actual examples, uh, probably with 
NGRX, which again isn't uh, Redux, but it's a, a similar thing. Uh, we'll take a look at some Angular examples. We'll probably try out some Redux examples in Stencil uh, with Ionic. And yeah, Redux is, it's something that is, it can be used at a reasonably basic level, I guess, but it is also something that is extremely extensible. There's uh, lots of add-ons that can be used and uh, sort of advanced ways you can debug and make use of all these advanced features in your application. So uh, we'll see how far we go down this road. But I just wanted to create this video as a bit of an introduction to the concept, uh, just to start getting used to it, get our feet wet a little bit, and then continue on from there. So. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, uh, please feel free to uh, leave a like and subscribe, and I will see you in the next video.